blessed God which was committed to my trust. And so the gospel was committed to Paul to preach the gospel and um, preach and teach. And then we find in chapter 2, uh, first Timothy chapter 2, and um, uh, look at verse, um, verse 8. It says, um, sorry, uh, verse 7. It says, Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and not lie, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. And so we see that Paul, uh, the gospel was committed to him, and immediately after he was saved, you know what? He took up the, he took up the mantle to go with the gospel of Jesus Christ and um, planted churches in many places, uh, taught men and, uh, and trained men for the ministry, and he was always involved in the work of God as he Amen. continued. I mean, it was not easy. Uh, he was imprisoned, he was beaten, he was uh, shipwrecked, and uh, he had many perils in his life. But you know what? He continued. He continued right. faithfully unto the end. Right. Second right. Timothy chapter 4. As he come, came down to the end of his life and ministry. And the Bible says uh, in um, first, uh, Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 7. Verse 6 rather. Let me set up verse 6. It says, For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is lit up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Right. And so we see Paul faithfully served in the ministry right. from the time he was saved unto the end of his life. He kept going for the glory and honor of God. Amen. Brethren, you and I have that same opportunity yeah. and that same responsibility as we live for the Lord, being saved by the grace of God, can serve the Lord faithfully unto the end. We do not have to flunk. We do not have to step aside. We do not have to retreat or deter, but we can move on faithfully yeah. unto the Lord. Right. As Paul told the, uh, the Corinthians, the Christians at Corinth in 1 uh, Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, right. for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, I want to encourage us this morning, brethren, could God count on you? Could God count on us? Could God count on every one of us that are saved to serve? And I want to share three things with you this morning on the matter of could God count on you? First of all, could God count on, on you to be addicted to the ministry? Amen. <laughs> Paul was addicted to the ministry. That's right. He was committed. I mean, he 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 his heart was set upon, he was devoted to the to the to the service of the Lord, to the ministry. He was completely given over to the, to the work of God. He was faithful in every, every step of the way as he continued in the work of the Lord. And you know what? God is counting on you and me right. as he saved us and placed us in this, in this church, in this local church. <laughs> you know what? That we will serve faithfully. Amen. We will Amen. serve faithfully because God saved us for a purpose yeah. that will right. serve him. You know what? Paul was addicted, but we have another another man here in the scripture that that, that the scripture spoke about of his addiction. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and um, looking at verse 15. 1 Corinthians 16, 15. The Bible says here in verse 15, I beseech you, brethren. Ye you know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruit of Achaia, and that, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Man. They have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. You know what? The house of Stephanus, they was committed to the ministry as they serve in that area of uh, serving the saints. If you read on in verse 16 and 17, it says that, that, he, that ye submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. I am glad of the coming of Stephanus 
and a fortunus and of Achaeus for that which was lacking on your part they have supplied. They was faithful in the service of the Lord, addicted Amen. to the ministry. You know what? People are addicted to a lot of things in this world. In yeah. this world, more people are addicted to drugs. Yeah. People right. are addicted to all kinds of uh, sexual immorality. People are addicted to their phones, yeah. to their yeah. televisions, <laughs> to their iPods. <laughs> and all of these things, people are addicted to that. Alcohol, people are addicted to alcohol. And yeah, many things right. in this life people are addicted to. You know what? Yeah. What is a Christian addicted to? Yeah, come what on. are we addicted to? Come you on. know what? This morning, brethren, we ought to be addicted to the ministry, to the work of God. Amen. Because it is it's going to be worth it all when we see Jesus. Amen. One of these days he's coming again. Try. You know, how would we meet him? Would we meet him with a joy in our hearts knowing that he will say to us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Or it will be a time of remorse for us that we have not run well. We have not served him faithfully. You know, the Bible says it is required in church that a man be found faithful. God expects us to be faithful. I know that this church has many ministries. I know that this church has ministries going. Huh? We have the bus ministry, right? <laughs> You know what? Since you have been saved as a child of God, what ministry are you involved in yeah, in this church? Right. Tell me about it. What ministry are you involved in in this church? Right. Because I know that this church has ministries. Yeah. I, I mentioned the church, the bus ministry. We have a prayer, I'm sure we have a prayer ministry going on. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and um, if you cannot do certain things, as the preacher was saying this morning, you can't go. Boy, you know what? Prayer works. Amen. Yeah? Amen. I, prayer works. Uh, Philippians 4 6 says, Just be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. God, it, over in 1 Thessalonians 5 17, it says, What? Pray without ceasing. Right. So that's a wonderful ministry of prayer. Amen. Where we can pray. God answers prayer. Amen. God answers prayer. Amen. The Bible tells us over in 1 uh, Peter chapter 3 and verse 12. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. Amen. Amen. But the face of the Lord is against those that do evil. And so this morning, with the prayer, Jesus says, you know what? Men ought always to pray and not faint. And so prayer is a wonderful ministry of the church that you can involve in. Amen. When you pray meeting time, where are you? Are you in the house of God? Are you there praying? I'm telling you, brethren, it is important that you get involved in the ministry. Amen. We have we have uh, the visitation ministry that we go out and win souls. Amen. Yeah, we go out and tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I know that you have a food ministry going on. That um that uh, is a wonderful ministry, the whereby you can uh, minister to people. Amen. I mean, not only give them the physical food, but you can at the same time give them the spiritual food <laughs> that which they need most of all. Right. And so, uh, you know what, brethren, you can get involved in the work of the Lord. Right. Um, uh, turn to, with me to James, James chapter 1. And um, let's look at this here. Uh, let, let's look at pure religion. How important it is, um, as the Bible tells us here. Um, verse 26 and 27 of, first, of James, sorry, James chapter 1. 26 and 27, it says, If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Well, because you know what? I know a lot of people that have a lot of talk. But I often tell all people at home, ministry spells work. <laughs> ministry is not talk. It is work. Right. It's where you're going to go in the work of God. Amen. Do something right. for the honor and glory of God. Amen. And so the Bible says if, if a man uh, say he has religion and um, all he does is talk, his religion is vain. Yeah, uh, he's a babbler. <laughs> all right? But then look at verse 27. It says, pure religion and on the fire before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted 
from the world. Amen. That's our visitation. Whereby we can visit those who are sick, those who are uh, 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 orphans, and all of these things. You know what? I heard it talk about the home, the nursing home, and all these areas. You know what? This is pure religion. When we reach out there to people who are in need, <laughs> and we reach out to them because we have what it takes to help them, to give them comfort. God, the God of all comforts, has comforted us so that we can comfort others also. Right. Amen. You know what? This is a ministry of the church that God's people ought to realize. Well, we ought, we ought to be engaged in that Amen. because it is what the Word of God teaches. That is pure right. religion. Amen. That is real religion. That is a religion that is true and faithful to the honor and glory of God. Right. And so we see that the ministry is important that we take time, brethren, to find ourselves involved in the ministry. Amen. And um, God expects of us to be involved in the ministry, to do what is necessary, what is required of us. Paul told Timothy, make full proof of thy ministry. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 5, make full proof of thy ministry. Whatever God has called you to do, whatever God has uh, given you to do, you know what? You need to do it well. Amen. Do it faithfully. Um, because without faith, the Bible says without faith in Hebrews 11 and verse 6, without faith is impossible to please him. Yeah. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. And so Amen. brethren, God expects us to be faithful. Faithful to the cause of Christ. We, have, we live in a world today that um, people are just want to serve God just in a mediocre uh, way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, in a just a little flare flare way. But you know what? We need to be solid in the Lord. Amen. We need to be strong in the Lord. Right. We need to be purposeful in what we do for, the, for, for God because God is real. God is true. Right. And we cannot outdo God. We cannot outgive God. We cannot outdo God. Right. What God has done for us, we can never do anything more, I mean, more than what God has done for us. Let's think Amen. of it. What Jesus Christ did for us, yeah. there is nothing we can do right. on this earth that could be compared with it. But God has given us the opportunity to serve, Amen. to serve Him. Amen. Serve Him. Uh, he, uh, Philippians, uh, uh, not Philippians, but Galatians chapter 6. And verse 9 tells us, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Whatever you are doing, you know what? Sometimes some Christians start, start well, so did the Lord. They're going. Come on, man. A little while, they start fagging out. They start <laughs> lazing out. Yeah. You right. know what? God wants us to be faithful. Amen. God wants us to be continually faithful. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And the verse 10 says, As we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men. Amen. Especially to those who are of the household of faith. Amen. So God gives us opportunity to serve. If you are a child of God this morning, God gives you opportunities to serve Him. Amen. 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 I mean... God always brings opportunity to you to serve Him. And so there is not a time you can say, well, I can't do anything and I have not, nothing to do. Brethren, there is much to be done. Yes, amen. Much to be done amen. in the work of God, amen. in the ministry of God. And uh, we cannot say, well, I can't do anything. I am not able to do anything. That is not right. <laughs> God amen. expects us to serve. Amen. So we need to be addicted to the ministry. Right. As Paul was addicted to the ministry. As uh, Stephanus was addicted to the ministry. Whatever ministry God has called us into, God makes it available for us so that we can serve Him faithfully. Amen. Not only that, but secondly, could God come to you to be effectively using your gift for Him? Yeah. Whatever gift God has given to you, God told Paul, you know what, I want you to go to preach to the Gentiles and kings and to the children of Israel. And Paul <laughs> faithfully went on preaching the gospel, teaching and preaching. And um, in everywhere uh, that he found himself, he preached the gospel. Even in prison, he preached the gospel. And so um, he was very effective in doing what God calls him to do. Yeah. What about you and me today? How effective are we in what God has given to us? You know what? You are gifted. God has given the church gifts. 
I want you to remember that this morning. Yeah. Uh, look at James chapter 1 with me. Peace of James chapter 1. God has given the church gifts. Uh, let's see who gifts come from. God. Uh, and I'm sure this morning, uh, uh, you know what? Everybody in here love to receive <laughs> gifts, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> look at verse 17. The Bible says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above Amen. and cometh down from the Father of lights, in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights. Amen. God, the giver of gifts. Good gifts, perfect gifts. <laughs> Whatever God gives to us is good and it's perfect. Amen. He has given us a perfect salvation. Right. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I mean, there is no flaw in the salvation that God has given to us. Right. It is a sure salvation. Amen. It is a salvation that is, that is not contaminated, not corrupted, but it's pure. It's real. Amen. It's Amen. true. Right. What God has given to us, what God has done into our life. When he saved us, he saved us for now and for all Amen. eternity. Amen. I mean, there is no one that could pluck us out from his right. hand. Right. No one could pluck us out from his father's hand. Right. We are perfectly in the perfect will of God. Amen. In the hand of God. Amen. And then Jesus says so in John chapter 10. John chapter 10 verse uh, 27. It says uh, in verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And then verse 28, it says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Amen. And then verse 29 says, and My Father which give them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out from my Father's hand. Amen. Brother, we are secured in the hand of God. Amen. The devil cannot touch us. That's right. The devil cannot move us. Right. Right. Oh no, we are in the hand of the Almighty. Amen. The perfect one, the greatest one. There is none that could com be compared with That's him. Right. He's Amen. over all dominion, principalities, and powers. Amen. He's over all. Amen. Because Amen. he's a great God Almighty. Right. Right. That's the God we serve. Amen. Amen. So this morning, you know what? He has given us gifts. He has given the church gifts. Every one of us. Who are saved by the grace of God, God has given you a gift or gifts. And so there is not a time you can sit up sit and say, Well, I can't do anything. I don't know how to do this. You gotta rise up and get involved. Amen. That's how you're gonna learn. Amen. That's how God is gonna use you when you get up and be involved in the work of God. Amen. Don't sit back there and say, I can't do anything. God has sent you and has given you something That's that you right. can use for Him. Amen. Live you me. He has done that. Turn to Ephesians uh, chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse 7 and verse 8. It says, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. For wherefore, he said, When he ascended up, on high he had, cap he had led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Look now at verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Jump over to 1 Peter chapter 4 with me. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. Look at verse 10 and verse 11. I'm going to type this for a little while. Verse 10. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so we see that uh, as every man had received the gifts, and that's what I'm saying. Every one of us who are saved by the grace of God, God has given us at least one gift. He has given us a gift. And we know that there are people that are, are blessed with more than one gift. Right? But God at least has given you a gift. Amen. Right. And I want you to re re realize this. If you have not realized this yet as a child of God, realize that God has given you a gift. Amen. And so the Bible says here, 
as every man has received the gift, what should we do with it? It says, even so, minister the same one to another. And so that gift is not to be sat upon <laughs> or to be, be uh, indifferent with. It's not a gift that God has given to you so that you can do what you want with it. Oh. But it says here, minister. Minister that gift or wow. gifts one to another. So the church ought to be ministered to, to through the saints of God. Amen. Who God has been, who God has gifted. God has given us gifts so that we can minister one to another. Amen. <laughs> one to another. Why? Why, why, why this? Go back to Ephesians chapter 4 with me. Ephesians chapter 4. Look then at verse 12. And so God has given us gifts. Now it says to minister for what purpose? Look at, look at, um, Amen. look at verse 12. It says for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Amen. Ministry spells work. <laughs> For the edifying of the body Amen. of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children. Tossed to and fro. And carried about with Amen. every wind of doctrine. By the deceit of men. And cunning craftiness. Whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And so, when God gives the church gifts, is that the church, the, the, the gifts that he has given to the, to the saints of God, that we minister that gift to one to another, to the church, for the, it says what? For the perfecting of the saints, Amen. or the maturing of the saints. Amen. That's why the church must grow. Spiritual growth is very important Amen. in the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are not to remain babes in Christ, Try but we ought to be growing, uh, as the scripture says, but grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. In fact, in the very inception of the child of God, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2 and verse 4, as newborn babes, Desire the sentient milk yeah. of the word. That what? That he may grow thereby. Yeah. God expects the Christian, the baby Christian to grow. To right. grow into maturity. Just as the physical babe. We have a physical babe right here this morning. But you know what? That physical babe when you're in there is going to be growing and doing things in a while. Amen. And you know what? God expects us as spiritual babes. Those of us who are spiritual babes. Yes, spiritual babes. He expects us to mature, right. to right. grow to maturity, right. and do not remain spiritual babes. Right. No. Yeah. The church ought to have some mature people right. that can lead, that can teach, that can be examples yeah. to the younger ones that's coming. Amen. You know what? The church needs mature, mature people, yeah. right. mature saints of God. In fact, Second uh, Second Timothy three and verse sixteen says, "All Scripture is given by inspiration of God." Amen. And it's profitable for doctrine, yeah. for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So God expects maturity in the house of the Lord. That Amen. people will grow, grow Amen. into spiritual mature people. Amen. That's what it says here. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work ministry. It means that you and I ought to be involved in the work of God. Amen. If you name the name of Christ and say, I am saved by the grace of God, then you don't need to be in the work of God. Amen. You need to be in the work of God. You need to be involved in the work of God. Amen. Faithfully involved. And then it says, for the edifying of the saints, what? Amen. Of the body of Christ. Yes, that's how the church is going to be edified. We need to edify one another. No. <laughs> Uh, over in uh, Hebrews 10 and verse 25, the Bible says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together Amen. as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and right. so much more as you see the day approaching. I'm saying this morning, brethren, it's getting closer to the That's coming right. of the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
is getting closer every day, every moment is getting closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we need to get, get busy doing the work of God, right. occupying till he comes, because he's going to come one of these days, he's going to come my friend, he's going to come and take his own. I'm saying this morning to you if you're here without Jesus Christ, if Jesus comes today, what would be your fate with him? Do you know that you have eternal life this morning? My friend, I'm telling you today, it's a good day to trust the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. as your Savior. Amen. It's a day that He can make your calling and election show. It's a day, my friend, when you can turn from sin and turn to God. Because sin, my friends, brings forth death. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death to be separated from God. But thank God, it says, continues to say, but the gift of God is eternal life Amen. through Jesus Christ Amen. our Lord. Amen. So today, you can have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Amen. If you will come to him today, Amen. repent from your sins, my friend. Repent and turn to Jesus and by faith receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. God doesn't want you to perish. The Bible says in 2 Peter 3 and verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men call slackness, but is long suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God don't want you to perish, my friend. When God made you, he made you to serve him, Amen. to honor him, to live for him. Sad to say our sinful nature, to, I mean, cause us to go away from God. All we like sheep, have gone astray, says Isaiah. Every man has gone his own way. But the Lord had laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Jesus paid the price Amen. of our sins. Right. He died a vicarious death for you and for me. Amen. And today, my friend, you can trust him as your savior. Right. You don't have to die and go to hell. Because hell is real, my friend. Right. This is how heaven is real. Hell is real, my right. friend. Right. If you die and go to hell, there will be no return for you. Yeah. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Come and receive him as Savior before it's eternally too late. Amen. You know what? The church, the church, we ought to be serving him faithfully with our gifts. The gifts that he has given to us. That we'll serve him. And uh, we'll, uh, we, will, we will do it with what God has given to us. So he has given us a gift. Turn back to 1 Peter chapter 4. Let me, let, me, uh, let me finish this here. Um, we see that he has given us a gift in verse 10. So that we will, we will use it. Minister that gift. As it says on. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. It's only by the grace of God we can do this or that. It's because of the grace of God. Amen. The apostle Paul says in uh, 1, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 10 and verse 15. It says... I, I, I am what I am by the grace of God. And so it's God's grace. By the grace of God, you and I can do anything. That's right. It's because of the grace of God. Yeah. And so it says as good stewards. The other thing is what kind of steward are you? A steward is one that uh, takes care of another's property. But today, what kind of steward are you? God says as good stewards. As good stewards. You will do the, what, what is required of you as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So God expects us to be good stewards who will take a, a, a great interest in doing the work of God, in serving God faithfully. Because not only that, but we find in verse 11 that God has also not only given us a gift, but he has given us the ability to use that gift. Well, it says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. Yeah. So God gives the ability. God gives the gift. And he also gives the ability to, to, do, to execute that gift. Yeah. And so that's why we cannot sit down and say, I can't do nothing. When God has done, give you something. Amen. <laughs> God has given you something right. so that you can use for him, for his honor, and for his glory. Look at the, look at the rest of the verse. It says what? In, that, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And so God has given the gift <laughs> so that we'll minister the gift. And he has also given us the ability to execute the gift. Amen. Amen. 
So God has done everything for us. But how do we take it? Do we desire to serve him that he will get the glory? You see, none of the glory belongs to us. Right. All is for his glory. Right. All is for his glory. And the, the, you know what, brethren? If we will get a hold of this as we serve the Lord, we will serve the Lord very faithfully. You know why? Because nothing that we do is for ourselves, but it's for him, Amen. for his glory. While we, in, in the midst of this, we make eternal dividends. We lay up treasures in heaven as God gives us the ability to do it. And then lastly, could God count on you to be a faithful ambassador? Could God count on you to be a faithful ambassador? Paul was a faithful ambassador. He represented the Lord Jesus Christ as he preached the gospel. It says, um, ambassador, it says to serve or honor a minister of the highest rank employed by one prince or state at the court of another to transact state affairs. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> we, the United States have ambassador around the world. Right? You know, I have ambassadors representing the United States around the world. And that's a high calling to think of it. Well, you know what? It is truly a higher calling yeah, to on. be a, a, an ambassador for the King of Kings Amen. and Lord of Lords. Amen. We are representing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right. the King of Kings Amen. and Lord of Lords. Amen. There is not a higher calling as we serve Him, as we represent Him here on earth. Good. You know what, brethren? We are ambassadors for Christ. You know what the Bible tells us that? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Jump over there for a minute here. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and um, look at verse 19 and 20. It says, To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us, whom you know sin, that we may have made the righteousness of God in him. But we you know what? We are ambassadors for Christ, Amen. representing Christ here on this earth. Amen. What a great calling. What a high calling. That we, finite beings, is representing the infinite God. <laughs> Think of it. Amen. The infinite God, the unlimited God, the great God, the greatest one, we are representing here on earth. What a privilege it is. Amen. I always come with a privilege to serve the Lord. Amen. Uh, to be a servant of the Lord. I come with a privilege to be a servant yeah. of the Lord. Good. And um, I, I don't see that burden. Sometimes I believe people think that um, the Christian life is hard and it, it's tough and it's rough and, and it's a burden. Hey, it's a privilege. Yeah. It's a privilege to be a child of the king. Amen. It's a privilege to serve the king of kings Amen. and lord of lords. Amen. We are ambassadors for Christ. Amen. Serving the greatest God almighty. Amen. You know what? People serve all kinds of things in this world. People serve all kinds of things in this world. Right. But brethren, we are... We are servants of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We are the ambassadors for Christ, as the scripture says here. And, um, and you know what? He, he placed us here so that we can represent him faithfully. Be a faithful witness for him on the face of this earth. In the midst of a crooked and a corrupted and evil generation. You know what? God placed us here to represent him. Try. So that we can be a light. To a dark and hopeless world. Amen. As Jesus says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Acts 1 and verse 8, the Bible tells us, he says, and ye shall, be wit ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Yeah. You know what? We are representing him. Everywhere we go, we ought to represent him. We are to be great soul winners for him. Proverbs 11.30 tells us that the fruit 
of the righteous is a tree of life. Amen. And he that winneth souls is wise. Amen. God wants us to be soul winners. Try. And we reach out there and reach the lost. For Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Mark 16, 15 tells us, Jesus says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Every, every man need to hear the gospel. Why? Because everywhere we go, man is sinners. The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so man need to hear the gospel. Without the gospel, man cannot be saved. Yeah. Right. They must hear the gospel. <laughs> Romans 10, 17 tells us, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. People need to hear the word of God. Right. Who will give them? That's why we preach the gospel. Amen. So people will hear. Right. They will hear. They will hear that Jesus saves. Amen. Jesus Amen. is the Savior. Amen. Jesus paid the price of our sins on the cross of Calvary. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Brethren, we are the representatives of Christ. Could God count on you to be a faithful ambassador of his? That you will go with the gospel, that you will go <coughs> tell people about Jesus. You will stand, you will stand strong in a, in, a, in a place where people don't believe in God and don't trust God, that you will stand alone for him <laughs> because you believe. You believe that he is indeed the savior yeah. of all mankind. Luke 19, 10, the Bible says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. And we have a lot of lost people in the world around us, my friend. We need, to rep, we need to stand strong for the Lord as faithful ambassadors as we live for Him. Because one day, you know what? One day, He will call us to accountability. Right. One day, He will call us to accountability. Right. Jesus says, you know what? The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors Pray the Lord will have us that He will send forth laborers into His harvest. Amen. I am going to be a laborer for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I am going to be a laborer in the in the harvest of the Lord. That you will be there, out there, reaching others for the Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful, what a wonderful privilege it is to reach people for the Lord, Amen. to win souls. I mean, the Bible tells us he that wins souls is wise, huh? It's a wonderful thing to win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He has commissioned the church to go. To go into all the world. Teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even yeah. unto the end of the world. God promises he's going to be with us. Amen. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Amen. And so we can depend upon him every step of the way. Amen. Everywhere Amen. we go, we can depend that God is with us. Yeah. Yeah. His promise, his promises are sure. Amen. He's never slack concerning his promise. But he's ever faithful to his promise. Amen. So, he wants us. Could he count on us? Could he count on you? Could he count on me? As we continue to serve him, Amen. as we represent it, as we represent the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If you're here today, my friend, without Jesus Christ, I want to, I want to invite you to trust the Lord. Amen. Trust him today. Give your life over to him. You will never regret it. Amen. Amen. 41 years ago, I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Amen. You know what? I, I have no regrets. Amen. Amen. It's a wonderful thing to serve the Lord. <laughs> I'm enjoying serving the Lord. Amen. And I, I, want to, I want to encourage you, those of you who are saved, who are uh, members of this assembly, continue to serve the Lord. Continue Amen. to be faithful. Amen. Amen. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. But be faithful unto the end. Amen. It will be worth it all when you see Jesus. Amen. When you see Jesus, the Bible says we'll be like him. We'll see him as he is, and we'll be like him. Amen. What a wonderful Savior he is. Amen. Trust. If you're here today without him, my friend, trust him before it's too late. Amen. Because the time is coming when the door will be closed. Right. The door will be closed on you. Don't spurn the grace of God. Don't spurn the mercy and the love of God. But trust him while there is opportunity. And the opportunity is now. He says, now is the accepted time. Behold, Today is the day of salvation. You know what the Bible says about tomorrow? Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Right. Come to him today and trust him as your Savior. Shall we pray? Father, 
Thank you again for your word. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us the opportunity that we can serve you, Lord. Saving us, you have saved us, you have given us the greatest privilege to serve you on the face of this earth. May we be faithful unto the end. We trust you, we depend upon you for what you're going to do. Pray for those who might be here this morning and do not know Jesus Christ as Savior. Lord God, that they will come to realize uh, the, the reality of uh, being outside of Jesus Christ and come to know him as their Savior. And we trust you for what you're going to do. Bless the invitation and have your way, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm looking around here this morning. Brother Houston preached a good message here this morning. I believe it's exactly what we needed to hear. This altar's open here this morning. Whatever you have need of, this altar's open. Why don't you come? Let's be, get some music again. Get some music to play. This altar's open. Maybe you're here this morning and maybe you're maybe you've kind of grown cold on the Lord a little bit. Maybe your service for the Lord is not not today like it once was before. Why don't you come this morning and turn it over to the Lord and purpose in your heart and, and tell the Lord that you're going to be more faithful to serve Him and to do more for Him. Maybe you're here this morning, maybe you've, you've been saved and you've never gotten involved in the ministries of the Lord before. You know what? We're running out of time. Now's the time for us to get involved and really do something for the Lord. Brother Houston was right when he said that, you know what, one day the Lord's coming back. I believe that time is, could be at any, any moment now, any day now the Lord could come back. The only thing that's going to matter in your life as a Christian is what are you doing for the Lord. Maybe some of you here this morning, you don't know Christ as your Savior. Maybe there's never been a time in your life where you've asked the Lord to come into your heart and wash away your sins and save you. He was right when he said that today is a day of salvation. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around here this morning. I want to ask a question. And I want you to be honest with yourself and be honest with the Lord. Nobody's looking except me here this morning. I want to ask this question. If you were to die today, if you were to die today, you're not 100% sure that you'd go to heaven. You can't remember a time when you asked the Lord to come into your heart and you're not sure that you'd go to heaven. Won't you slip up your hand? I want to pray for you. I don't want to single anybody out. I just want to pray for you. I see that hand. I see these hands. I see that hand. I need a female worker to come up here with these, these young ladies up here. Anybody else here this morning? All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Nobody looking around here this morning. Anybody else here this morning would say, Preacher, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure that my name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Is there anybody like that here this morning? Just slip up your hand. We want to pray for you. Well, let me ask this. How many of you here this morning know for sure that you're saved and you're on your way to heaven? Won't you slip up your hand and be proud of it here this morning? I, what are you doing for the Lord? Can the Lord count you faithful? How faithful are you to the service of the Lord? Well, preacher, I don't know what to do. Well, have you searched the Scriptures? Have you spent time in God's Word? Have you spent time in prayer asking God? You know what? God's called every one of us to be a soul winner. When was the last time that you went out and was a witness to somebody? When was the last time that you picked up a gospel track and handed it to somebody? When was the last time that you told somebody that Jesus saves and He's the only way to heaven. Folks, we need to be about our Father's business right now. Now's the time. Young people, if you're waiting until you're older, give God the days of your youth. You're not promised tomorrow, young people. I know that you, you think that you've got many years ahead of you. You've got your whole life ahead of you. But you know what? It's not so. It's not always so. There's many young people. You can go in the cemetery Go by and look at the headstones. Oh, yeah. And you see many headstones there with young people. That's right. Teenagers. You know, I think of a young man right now. So many of y'all in here, you knew it. His name was Evan Ellis. He was a good friend of mine. Grew up in a good home. Saved, knew the Lord. Sang for the Lord. You know what? He served the Lord in his young years. Do you know what? There came a time in his life once he finished high school he started drifting away from the Lord. And he quit serving the Lord. Hmm. And you know what happened? 
his life got cut short. Because at one time, he was committed to serving the Lord and giving the Lord all that he had. And he stopped. I wonder, what lies in store for you for those who are faithful to serve the Lord and you're lighting it up? Don't give up. We've come too far to turn back now. Amen? We've come too far to turn back now. We've come too far to throw in the towel. It's not time to throw in the towel. It's time to get be about our Father's business. This altar's open. Why don't you come? Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank You, Lord, for this day. Lord, we thank You for all Your many blessings, God. I thank You, Lord, for Brother Houston coming and preaching Your Word. God, I thank You so much for Your Word. God, I thank You for, for all the truths that we find within Your Word, God. I thank You for how Your Word speaks to my heart. God, I pray for these young people, these little children that are down here in the altar uh, this morning said they're not sure that they're saved. God, I pray that you touch them and you help yes. them. God, I pray, Lord God, that they, Lord, they understand they do get saved. Lord, and so we can train them up and be about the Father's business so that they can bring in more friends and boys and girls with them to the house of God where they can hear the gospel yes. and get saved. God, I pray for each and every person that's here this morning. Lord, I pray that we all be about the Father's business, that we can be counted faithful and we get involved in the ministry, Lord God, and realize just what a privilege it is and how much of a blessing it is to serve you. God, I pray, Lord God, you touch Glory Bound Baptist Church, God. Lord, I pray that you help us to grow and to move forward and, and to seek uh, those who are lost and give them the gospel, Lord, so they have the chance to get saved. Lord, I pray that you help us, Lord, in our ministries to all be about you, that it all be about souls being saved. God, I pray, Lord God, you help Brother Houston, Lord, and, uh, with his help, Lord God. I pray that you touch his ministries, Lord. And I pray that you continue to use him in a mighty way. God, I pray, Lord God, for Trinity. God, I pray that you touch them. God, I pray that you be with Brother Eric and the folks there at their church, God. Lord, I pray that you help them to continue to reach out to the community and see folks get saved. God, I pray, Lord God, that you help all of the churches, Lord, to come together and to work together and to see souls get saved. Lord God, we're running out of time. I know, Lord, that any day that trumpet will sound. And God, I know, Lord God, that we've got to give it all that we have, Lord, in these last days. God, I pray that you just touch us, Lord. Give us the strength, Lord, and the courage and the wisdom that we need to continue to press forward for you. God, I pray that you give us fruit for our labor, God. God, I pray, Lord God, that we be all about your business, Father. God, I pray that we do all that we can to seek out lost folks, Lord, and give them the opportunity to hear the Word of God and to get saved. God, I thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, all that you're going to do. Lord God, we love you. Lord, and we praise you. Yes. Lord, in Jesus Christ's name, I do humbly pray. Amen. 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 These girls over here, except the Lord. They do. We're going to pray for them, amen. Continue to pray for these young girls, amen. Amen. All right. All hearts and minds clear here this morning? Amen. I got one amen. Brother Houston, I guess you can preach some more. I got one amen. <laughs> amen. All right. Well, let's go ahead. I think everybody's hungry. I know I am. Amen. I was, I was hungry for the Word of God. I got fed spiritually here this morning. Now my belly's been ground for the last little bit. I'm ready to go in here and eat some fried chicken. All right. Well, Let's pray, and then we'll line up here at this door. Got you. Okay. We'll line up at this door, and you can go in here. We've got uh, tables in here uh, to sit at, uh, and then there's tables and chairs along the porch. Uh, so, young people, y'all sit out along the porch, okay? Leave the tables and the chairs for, for, the, for the adults, okay? All right. When we pray, the senior citizens first, Brother Houston first, then the senior citizens and then, every, and then everybody else following behind them, okay? <clears throat> Where are you going? He's making sure he gets close for when it is his time. All right, no, well, let's no, pray. Y'all sit down. We ain't prayed yet. Y'all seen your citizens? No. no. <laughs> but answer, Jesus. All right, y'all. Well, let's pray, and then we'll know we. All right, dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, again, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for all your blessings. Lord, I thank you for Brother Houston being here with us. God, I thank you, Lord, for the good fellowship, Lord, that we've had here this morning. I thank you for the, the, the Word of God being preached to us, Lord. God, I just thank you, Lord, for this, this time we have to come together in fellowship. Lord, I pray that you bless this food, that it may nourish our bodies. And I pray that you bless the hands that prepared it. Lord, I just pray that you continue to touch and bless every single person that's here today. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 So let's let Brother Houston go first.